giants. Giants. The children of the Nephilim. The Nephilim. Nephilim. Elgin. The children of the Nephilim. Nephilim. Giants. The seed of the fallen angels. The seed of the fallen angels. Nephilim. The story of the fallen angels begin in Genesis 6, 1 through 4. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And God said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his day shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of his thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The sons of God saw beauty of the daughters of men, and desired them as wives. Oh, how beautiful they are! The daughters of men, the daughters of men. come, let us go down unto them and take them as wives. And our seed will be mingled with theirs. Yes, yes, yes. Many people think that the term sons of God does not mean that they were angels. But if you read Job 1, 6, you'll see that this is exactly what they are, angels. Job 1, 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before Yahuwah, and Satan came also among them. Also in Job 38, 6 through 7, it states how the sons of God shouted for joy before man was even created. The sons of God are angels. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof, when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? The book of Enoch makes it clear that this is exactly what happened. The book of Enoch 7, 2 And when the watchers, angels, the sons of heaven, beheld them, they became enamored with them, saying to each other, Come, let us select for ourselves wives of the progeny of men, and let us beget children. Many people do not accept the book of Enoch, but it has hard facts proving that the angels took wives. The King James Version, on the other hand, isn't that clear. But the book of Enoch makes it very clear. This may be why the book of Enoch was not added to the Bible and why so many are so skeptical about the book. Modern scholars estimate the older sections, mainly the book of the Watchers, is dated at about 300 BC. And the latest part, the book of the Parables, is probably dated around the first century BC. Discoveries of copies of the book among the Dead Sea Scrolls found at Qumran proves that the book was in existence before the birth of the Messiah and it had a great influence on the early Messianic believers. Why is this important? Well, many of the sayings of the Messiah was derived from the book of Enoch.
Over a hundred phrases in the New Testament find precedence in the Book of Enoch. Here are a few of them. John 4, 14. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The Book of Enoch 48, 1. In that place I beheld a fountain of righteousness, which never failed. The term children of light in the Bible may have come from the book of Enoch 105, 25. And now I will call the spirits of the good from the generation of light, and will change those who have been born in darkness. Matthew 22, 30. For the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. The Book of Enoch 50, 4 And all the righteous shall become like angels in heaven. When the Messiah said in Luke 6, 24, But woe unto you that are rich! It is a direct quote from the Book of Enoch 93, 1 Woe to you who are rich! Terms like Son of Man, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, all were found in the Book of Enoch. This pretty much validates the book, since both the Messiah and his apostles quote from it. According to the Book of Enoch, 200 angels descended upon Ardis, which is the top of Mount Armon today known as Mount Hermon, which is located on the border between Lebanon and Syria. The Book of Enoch 7.7 7. Then they swore all together, and all bound themselves by mutual execrations. Their whole number was 200, who descended upon Ardis, which is the top of Mount Armon. The Book of Enoch 7, 10 through 15. Then they took wives, each choosing for himself, whom they began to approach, and with whom they cohabitated, teaching them sorcery, incantations, and the dividing of roots and trees. And the woman conceiving brought forth giants, whose stature was each 300 cubits. These devoured all which the labor of men produced, until it became impossible to feed them, when they turned themselves against men in order to devour them, and began to injure birds, beasts, reptiles, and fishes, to eat their flesh one after another, and to drink their blood. Then the earth reproved the unrighteous. The Hebrew word for giant is nephil, from nephal, properly, a feller, example, a bully or tyrant, giant. There are three races that came forth from the fallen angels, the giants, which are the nephilim, the nephil, which are the children of the giants, and the Iliod or eljo, which are the children of the nephil. Jubilees 7, 21 through 22. For owing to these three things came the flood upon the earth, namely, owing to the fornication wherein the watchers against the law of their ordinances went a whoring after the daughters of men, and took themselves wives of all which they chose, and they made the beginning of uncleanliness, and they begat sons the Nephilim. And they were all unlike, and they devoured one another. And the giants slew the Nephil, and the Nephil slew the Eljo, and the Eljo mankind, and one man another. Second Peter 2, 4 through 5. For if Elohim spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. 
and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Most people believe that the giants were all destroyed in the flood and that the fallen angels were all bound in everlasting chains. This is true as it relates to the first fallen angels and giants. But we must keep in mind that there were giants after the flood that dwelt in the land of Canaan. Where did these new race of giants come from? If the first giants came of fallen angels and the original fallen angels were bound unto judgment, we can only conclude that they must have come from a new generation of fallen angels. They continue to come down and take the daughters of men as wives and bear children unto them. This is why Paul warned us of this thing, of angels coming down and talking to us. Galatians 1, 6 through 8. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the favor of the Messiah unto another good message which is not another, but there be some that trouble you, and would pervert the good message of the Messiah. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other message unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Did you hear that? I find it amazing that Paul said that an angel can come and give you a message contrary to that which the Ruach HaKadosh, the set apart spirit, had given. You mean to tell me that some of us has entertained angels and wasn't aware of it? That means not knowing that they were angels. They took on the form of flesh and blood, and some took on this form in order to take human wives. Mm. This is why we see giants after the time of the flood. The land of Canaan was filled with them. The scriptures give account that there were many giants throughout the land of Canaan after the flood. Where did they come from? And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. The Emims dwelt therein in times past, a people great and many, and tall as the Anakims, which also were accounted giants as the Anakims, but the Moabites call them Emims. For only Og king of Bashan remained of the remnant of giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. Is it not in Rabbath of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the length thereof and four cubits the breadth of it after the cubit of a man. The Book of Enoch 7, 11 through 12 And the women conceiving brought forth giants, whose stature was each three hundred cubits. These devoured all which the labor of men produced, until it became impossible to feed them. Most Christians try to discredit the Book of Enoch based on the passage that says the giants were 300 cubits tall, which makes the giants around 450 feet. That's pretty incredible, and seems to be questionable. The scribes and translators must have made an error, and the actual text could have read 30 cubits instead of 300 making the giants about 45 feet tall, which is in accordance to some of the remains being found. I find it strange that Christians are willing to discredit the Book of Enoch based on a couple of errors, 
but the King James Version has hundreds of such errors, not to mention Christianity itself is full of errors. The Book of Enoch is one of those that's um, accepted by some and rejected by others. It is a very controversial book because it raises a lot of questions about the identity of certain racial groups and it brings greater understanding to many of the mystical things that are greatly misunderstood today. You have the question of the giants, the spirits that roam the earth, the elements of end time prophecy and so much more that are very difficult to simply just dismiss because there is just too much starting to make sense as certain events unfold. We know for a fact that there were giants in the land of Canaan after the flood. Where did they come from? The book of Enoch and the book of the giants give very good information about the giants and the fallen angels they sprung for and who their descendants are. The Book of Giants is an apocrypha Hebrew book expanding a narrative in the Bible. Its discovery at Qumran dates the text's creation to before the second century BC. The Book of Giants is thought to have been based on the Book of Enoch, a pseudopographical Hebraic work from the third century BC, itself based on Genesis 6, 1 through 4, concerning the Nephilim which, in the Enoch version, are the offspring of fallen angels. Aramaic fragments, along with other fragments from the Book of Enoch, were found among the Dead Sea Scrolls at Qumran. The text relates how some giants named Oya, Ahaya, and Mawe, sons of the fallen angels, have some dreams that foresee the biblical flood. The Book of Giants, Fragment J, Verses 27 Thereupon the giants began to kill each other and to abduct their wives. The creatures, too, began to kill each other. They chose beautiful women and demanded them in marriage. So did all carried off severally. They were subjected to tasks and services and they from each city, and were ordered to serve the Messenians of Messenia, which was a region of Greece. The first Messenian war was a war between Messenia and Sparta. It took place around 754 BC. In 480 BC, Leonidas, Sparta, sacrifices 300 Spartan soldiers at the Battle of Thermopylae so the main forces can escape the Persians. This is where we get the movie 300 from. Of course, they made a lot of changes to the original story. Now why is this so important? These early nations were all descendants of fallen angels which the Nephilim sprang forth from. Most authors have not taken into account that this Nephilim and their children, the Eliud, could reproduce. This explains some of the strangeness of ancient mythology. Moreover, perhaps, were humanoids, such as the Neanderthals came from, and why they are not of the same DNA branch as modern humans out of Africa. However, Neanderthals were not the only hominin species that humans mated with. According to a new study, East Asian and European populations share genes with the Neanderthal. Also, East Asians share genes with the mysterious archaic hominin species that lived in Siberia, the Denisovians that are close cousin to the Neanderthal, 